Control the choke point, how the U.S. stole the Panama Canal. Oh my God. Okay, let's do it. That's a fire-ass playlist, by the way. Fuck me. There's this one lake in Central America that if you look closely enough, you're gonna see the tops of trees in the lake. And these, these are not islands. These are hilltops. This all used to be a dense jungle, not a lake. But then they built dams and all sorts of infrastructure to flood this forest, all in the name of solving a centuries old puzzle, which was how do we make it faster and easier to travel between here and here, even in spite of the fact- I know you're not even gonna look, but never mind that why are you so against vegan stuff? It's a joke, man. I know it's, uh, it's hard when you stop eating uh, meat and consuming animal products. There is, um, there is this thing called joking that you normally would know. Your camo is trending. Haha, ha, what? I'm so horrendously down bad, Sag. I mean, barely. What is this? This is a person with 3,000 likes. How is that trending? The fact that you have two massive continents blocking any waterway. But there was hope. If you look down here at this one thin stretch of land, here it's only 80 kilometers across, and it looks so easy to just cut a waterway into it. No. Turns out that puzzle was not easy. This little 80 kilometer strip of land proved to be really hard to cut through. But as long as international trade continued to grow, there continued to be great powers looking for new waterways to shorten their routes and to increase their power. For whoever controls the water has the power. And these great powers always focused on this narrow stretch of land from the Spanish in the 14th century to the Scottish in the 15th. But then the most earnest and serious attempt was in 1880. When this guy, a French engineer, Ferdinand de la Sepp, shows up and is like, hey, I got this. He had just completed another big world-changing canal over here. He was feeling very confident and he's like, yep, I'm your guy. Let's build another canal. It'll be easy. We'll just dig down to sea level and reroute the river like we did in Egypt for the Suez Canal and it'll be great and I'll be famous. But listen, de la Sepp, Egypt is a flat desert and Panama is not. These mountains that you want to dig through are well above sea level. So if you want to dig down to sea level to make a flat canal, it's not going to be. Mike Judge is MAGA. What? No fucking shot, dude. There is no shot, dude. I do not believe that. That makes no fucking sense whatsoever. Why the fuck would the guy who made King of the Hill literally be a fucking MAGA, dude? No shot. The guy who made Idiocracy? You're joking, right? The guy who made Idiocracy. Office space is like literally anti-capitalist. Idiocracy is literally fucking... Uh, idiocracy is like the future with Donald Trump. He made Silicon Valley. He saw the future of idiots ruling everything because he is one of the idiots trying to rule the future. No shot. No, I don't believe that. There is 0%. There's like no fucking chance that that's this is real like no chance what 
He's friends with Alex Jones. More thought crimes with Alex Jones than Mike Judge. Thought crimes now banned on Facebook. Bro, this is literally back in 2014. What the fuck are you talking about? Back in 2014, dude. Shooting fucking guns with Alex Jones does not imply that you're like... In 2014, does not imply that you're fucking MAGA when you're literally making Silicon Valley. There's like an endless amount of... There's a, he's a fucking dude from Texas. It's like saying Richard Linklater is a, is a MAGA chud. R Linklater put Alex Jones in two of his movies. Not one, but two of his fucking movies. You're crazy. Where are your thoughts on the other grand situation? Idiocracy is eugenics. What do you mean? It literally builds on the concept that we're getting dumber and that's built into the bell curve. Oh my God, dude. Yes. Cancel Mike Judge. I know. I know, dude. I know. I know. I know. I know. It's fucking anarchists, dude. Just please stop. Just, just. I promise, dude. It's not that fucking deep. Okay. Problematic movie, dude. Idiocracy. Alex was insane in 2014 already, bro. I mean, he was, but... Idiocracy returns after 10 years. Unfortunately, it's not really set in the future anymore. Yeah, dude. Yeah, no. This guy's definitely fucking MAGA, dude. Yeah. I'm sure the guy who's been like... I'm sure the guy who made Idiocracy and says, like, Idiocracy in 2016, Idiocracy is, like, real life. Poggies. What do you mean by he made Silicon Valley? The fucking HBO show, dude. God, I fucking... I don't know what happened there, okay? okay? I have no idea what happened there, but I do find it hilarious when motherfuckers are like, oh, no, this is... It's over. Like, this is the truth. This guy 100% is a fucking MAGA guy. I know it in my heart of hearts. I, I, I know it to be true. Sorry. It is what it is. Idiocracy director Mike Judge says Fox stopped his anti-Donald Trump ads. Um, Chad is so willingly stupid when they're trying to cancel someone. Absolutely. They 100% are. Um, he might have supported, like, fucking Prop A or some shit, which is, like, a cop bill, right? He's definitely a liberal who loves cops. He's like an Austin liberal who loves, who probably likes cops. You need to stop. I've never seen say, someone take this much copium. What? Dude. Dude. What the fuck are you talking about, dude? Like, you have someone's entire body of work. You have someone's entire body of work show a certain way. Okay? Like... Advocate for a certain thing. And then you literally turn around and you're like, well, this one random guy said that he donated to a fucking conservative cause. So he must be MAGA and I'm actually fucking, he must be MAGA and I'm actually a copium. I'm doing copium. Yo. I don't know what to tell you, dude. Like you're fucking insane. Why the fuck would he be that way? 
if his entire body of work is the exact opposite? Makes no sense. There are tens of millions of rich white libs that back the blue. Oh, yeah. Dang has it already almost. Austin ballot yet. measure could benefit police, but might that come at the expense of firefighters? If voters approve it, a ballot provision in November increased staffing in the Austin Police Department could come at a steep cost. Somewhere between 54 million and 190 million per year if the city estimates are correct. Yeah, he's a fucking pro cop guy. Yeah, he loves cops, I guess. There's a lot of people who support cops, chatters. Anyway, all right, where were we? Okay. Easy. Meanwhile, another French engineer comes to Delacep and he's like, dude, this isn't gonna work. It's way too much digging. Instead of bringing the mountains down to sea level, what you- Noticeably disabled people are the most discriminated minority, but it's put on the back burner due to Black Lives Matter. Yeah, um, and black people specifically are of course, uh, never disabled. Like, disabled black people don't get harmed by the police ever. Um, so I'm glad that this person is, uh, I'm glad that you're, you know, taking a stance against Black Lives Matter, dude. Yeah, it cancels out. Good take, I by the way. I in the middle of a video and chat doesn't Idiot. hear this. What you need to do so is bring the podcast. sea up to the mountains. And in a moment of collaborative creativity, Delacep admits that he was wrong and begins construction based on the new plans. And then he promotes this guy as the head of engineer and says, great idea. No, Delacep was like, bring the ocean up to the mountains. That sounds stupid. Screw you. I'm the famous one. The canal is going to be at sea level, just like we did with the Suez Canal. So the French start digging. Well, actually it wasn't the French. It was a ton of poorly paid migrant workers who were doing the digging, hacking away at the jungle with machetes and then digging by hand with pickaxes in sweltering heat, knee deep in sitting water, which is heaven for, you guessed it, disease infested mosquitoes, which is terrible news. But luckily, Delacep, the engineer, was always there in the trenches with his workers, wielding a pickaxe alongside his people. Yeah, no, of course he wasn't. He was just hanging out in France, only visiting Panama twice over the course of seven years to just like check in on the project. And what he realized when he showed up seven years into this digging is that things were going horribly. People were dying like 40 or 50 a day. All in all, 20,000 workers died trying to dig this canal. Thousands died from disease and accidents and we will never know their names. And it's not just that people are dying, it's that the digging isn't working either. They would do a bunch of digging one day and then the next day the rain would bring in all of the mud that they just dug back into the canal. So Delacep shows up, realizes this is happening, is like, this is not working. Is there another way to dig this canal? And then he has a flashback to seven years earlier. Bring the sea up to the mountains. And he's like, oh yeah, that was actually a really good idea. Uh, my bad, we actually are gonna do that other plan instead. But no, it was too late. The investors were done. They had lost way too much money. 20,000 people were dead. Malaria and yellow fever were rampant. This was a failed project. So the company that owned all of this work had to abandon it and leave it unfinished in 1889. Everyone gave up and left, except for one of the top engineers on the project, this guy. I'm just gonna call him Philippe because after researching him for many days, I now feel like I'm on a first name basis with him. And by the way, he becomes a giant part of this story starting now. So Philippe was this French engineer and businessman and he was obsessed with the canal. He also had a huge financial stake in the project. Indeed, and where some indeed, investors yes. would say, darn, too bad, we invested in a bad bet. Let's Move. We need to go back to those good old days when, you know, they didn't have the nanny state and pesky labor laws that uh, made it so that uh, you would get, made it so that you wouldn't get punished when your workers died. You know what I mean? Sick and tired of these goddamn pussy libs and their silly fucking labor laws, dude. I don't need the nanny state telling me I got OSHA. 
Gavon, Philippe was like, no, I will do whatever it takes to make sure that this is not a failure. Please stop sending me the Pablo Escobar Porsche, dude. It's literally $2.3 million. I looked at it. Heard you like Porsches. Here's Pablo Escobar's Porsche. It's $2.3 million, dude. And what happens next is one of the most insane things I have ever researched in my entire life. So buckle up. The wind of change is blowing half a gale in the Panama Canal zone. Okay, so let's get some context really quick. It's like 1900 at this point. The US is really starting to like get a handle on this whole imperialism thing that they've been doing. They just fabricated a war with Spain, which led them to conquer the Philippines, Guam, and Puerto Rico. They had just overthrown Hawaii's government. They annexed Wake Island and American Samoa. They're like, dude, this overseas no, empire this thing is kind of working out for us. The president at the time was Teddy Roosevelt, who we've seen in previous episodes. And Teddy is looking around this region that the US is increasingly taking over. And he sees an opportunity to dramatically increase the naval power of the United States if they could just unite the Atlantic and the Pacific. It's time to build a canal, says Teddy. So of course they looked somewhere in Central America. And the original plan that the US wanted to pursue was to build a canal not in Panama, but here in Nicaragua. It wasn't the short shortest stretch of land in this area, but there was a huge lake here which would cut down on the digging and it just made a lot of sense. So they started doing surveys and making plans to build a canal in Nicaragua. Meanwhile, Philippe, the Frenchman, is still down here at his failed project and he's seen the US become interested in the canal and he's like, this is my moment of vindication. So he goes to the US Congress and he's like, hey guys, I know you're looking at Nicaragua, you've been doing all this site planning and surveys and stuff, but guess what? Right next to this proposed site for your canal, there are volcanoes, big, scary, belching volcanoes. And one of them just erupted around here, sort of next to your site. Nicaragua even had a postage stamp that featured one of these nearby volcanoes erupting. So the Frenchman goes around to the US senators and distributes this postage stamp and says, look, scary volcanoes in Nicaragua, don't build your canal here or they'll be destroyed by lava or or something. And guess what? It totally worked. The US Senate got cold feet about their Nicaragua canal plan, and they're like, uh, we're not gonna do this anymore. Let's find another place to build it. And Philippe is like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that just worked. <laughs> Stamps with volcanoes. He's like all giddy, and he's like, hmm, I wonder where there would be a good place to build a canal. Oh, wait a minute. Why not Panama? We, the French, already did a ton of work to get you started. Why don't you just got pick up where we batch. left off? I we'll sell you all of our gear, back. all of our stuff. It'll be a great deal. And the just serious Andy here. Should women's fit clothing be labeled as FemFit instead of women's on clothing store sites to include fem NBs? I mean, you're just literally bored and you want me to fucking yell at you. That's just it. Like. The U.S. is like, but isn't Panama a part of Colombia? And yes, indeed, at the time, Panama was actually a part of Colombia. It was not an independent country. So the United States Congress is like, okay, listen, Philippe, we will buy you out of your canal project that you clearly- Dog, chill. Chill. We're, we're fucking watching a video about imperialism and the Panama Canal. And Chatter's like- Hey, what's up? What's the deal? Like, should the, you know, should the fucking clothing stores uh, be more inclusive of, like, uh, them presenting uh, NBs? It is so irrelevant. Like, let's just have a, let's just have a fucking conversation about that instead of whatever the fuck you're doing here. Really failed on, but we will only do it if we can get approval from Colombia, who literally owns this land. And Philippe is secretly like, ugh, there's no way that Colombia is going to go for this. They're gonna reject the plan, and then the US is gonna back out, and I'm gonna lose all my money, uh, and I have to make this happen. Philippe do. was very serious about this canal. So this is where Philippe starts to get really conniving to pull out all the stops to get the canal built. So he goes to the people who <laughs> Mom is it. 
It's not the guy's fault there were diseases. Doesn't have anything to do with labor laws. Wow, one year of brain Dog, are you Wouldn't aware of the time and place that we currently live in? You know there's another pandemic going on, right? It 100% is the fault of fucking business owners if they're forcing you to work in treacherous conditions without any sort of fucking care for your safety or any uh, implementing any public health measures. Three months, baby. Something, something, canal. Defending 19th century French engineer capitalists is, yeah. Uh, as a four-month subscriber is a new way to approach all matter. Oh, God, this guy. Maybe I'm wrong, but burgers are really dehumanizing. Who does it? Who they are doesn't matter, and all they're an unspecified object. My mom OD'd on opiates when I was seven. I had to call the police, and I've been traumatized ever since. Police will show up, put handcuffs on them instead of helping. Sorry to hear that. What? My birth triggered my mom's brain to develop bipolar because of hormone changes. What the fuck? Okay, I I should not have looked into this person's chat record. All right. It's a joke. It's a joke. It's a joke, Lamau. Okay. Live in the region of Colombia called Panama. And he says, hey guys, I know you've sort of been wanting to be independent from Colombia for a long time. Bogota is so far away, they don't care about you. You could be your own country. What if I, a French engineer, could guarantee your independence without a bloody war? Just leave the details to me. Make me your ambassador and I will make this happen. And the Panamanians are like, but dude, you're French. And he's like, yeah, 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 but you're Colombian. So why don't we team up in the name of creating Panama, nice a new country. And they were like, okay, fine, Philippe. You're our representative, our ambassador now. Just give us the signal when we should rise up for our independence. But you promised to make sure that Colombia is not gonna come in and quell our uprising. And Philippe's like, yeah, 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 I'll take care of it. Okay, before we keep going with the story, I wanna tell you about today's sponsor, Policy Genius. About a month ago- Jesus Christ. Philippe, he doesn't- Dude, I, I, I wanna finish this, but like, I'm not gonna lie, it's kinda mid. I don't know if he has to use it yet. But back to the Americans having to ask Colombia for approval to build their canal. Sure enough, they show up and Colombia's like, no, go home. You guys are way too aggressive around here lately. We're not interested. No canal. See you later. So the US goes to Philippe and they say, sorry, bro, the deal is off. Colombia said no. We said we'd only do this if Colombia said yes. After all, Panama is a part of Colombia. And Philippe is like, wait, hold on. I have a plan for this. I've been talking to the Panamanians and they want to break away from Colombia and they made me their ambassador. I've even written them a new constitution and designed them a new flag. Wait, Philippe, are you a graphic designer? No, but I designed them a flag anyway. We can still make this canal thing happen. All I need you guys to do is show up with your Navy to make sure that the Panamanians can rise up for independence without Colombia coming to shut it all down. And the US Congress is like, dude, you're nuts. See you later. But out of nowhere, the president at the time shows up and is like, did somebody say stage a theatrical revolution to take over more land and increase American power? I'm skipping this video, dude. I can't do this. Just because volcano 